Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, today, we are going to give you a, a short presentation of approximately 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, it will be a kind of uh, introduction to Diana. Uh, some of you are probably already familiar with this type of presentation. And uh, it will be followed by a short uh, demo to highlight one of the yeah, key features of our program. And today, uh, the demo will be more specifically focused on the definition of uh, an idiostatic pressure. And to do that, I will use a kind of uh, simplified dam model. And I will show you how you can easily define your uh, pressure uh, using the functions in Diana. During this uh, webinar, your microphone will remain muted to avoid any background uh, disturbance. But uh, as usual, uh, you have the possibility to raise your questions. There is a question box. You can type the question there. And uh, from time to time, I will, uh, I will have a look. And uh, if there are some questions coming now and then, I will try to answer them on the fly. Otherwise, I will get back to you per email after this uh, session. Of course, this session will be recorded. And uh, within a few days, we will make it available on our uh, YouTube channel. So keep an eye on, uh, on that if you want to uh, replay and learn more about uh, the Diana capability. Having said that, let's start with uh, the presentation of today. Uh, so as I mentioned, um, during the next uh, 30, 40 minutes, I will uh, try to give you a general overview on the analysis capabilities of Diana and uh, its application in the civil engineering field. So let's start with the name. Um, Diana is a, a short form of uh, displacement analyzer and is a general finite element program, which is dedicated to all type of uh, civil engineering project. It can be a bridge, a structure or infrastructure, but also geotechnical and uh, petroleum uh, engineering application. Our aim uh, is to provide a range of efficient uh, engineering solution to the daily or specific types of engineering problems that uh, by increasing the accuracy of the final results, our clients could uh, optimize the cost of their, of their project. Our core values uh, of, a co of our company are presented on this, uh, on this slide uh, based on the trusted relation with our clients and partners. We try to mature uh, dynamic and innovative ID to deliver a state-of-the-art solution and quality of service in a world-class product. So this is our, our daily uh, goal, I would say, here in, uh, in Delft uh, when we work with, uh, with Diana. On the next couple of slides, we uh, represent a list of some of our uh, valuable clients. Uh, we have clients in different countries all over the world from different organization types, from governmental organizations, uh, academic, university or research organization, but also from the private uh, sectors, uh, like consultancy company or construction, construction companies. From different sectors, uh, oil and gas, uh, energy, uh, underground uh, structure. And we really appreciate uh, their trust and effort in uh, using your program and uh, also sharing with us their valuable feedback so that uh, we can bring that to our software and make it uh, better every day. With respect to Diana application, I quickly go through some of the main key features and uh, activities. We start with uh, geotechnical and tunneling. We have a very good integrated solution for uh, all types of uh, geotechnical and tunneling application. So you can use the uh, integrated environment of Diana for any type of tunneling and underground structures. For ground freezing also called three phase analysis, we have a very good solution uh, for real soil structure interaction. So if you have some sort of uh, interaction between the underground and the surrounding soil of our rock, you can model it with the concept of nonlinear interface behavior. We have a couple uh, groundwater flow stress analysis uh, capability and uh, slope stability and, and many more. So, I mean, uh, you see that uh, the list of possibilities is, uh, is kind of endless with, with Diana. So, uh, we are definitely uh, offering a, a 
proper solution for geotechnical and, uh, and tunneling. Next to that, uh, we have a very comprehensive solution associated to uh, reinforced concrete and the early age behavior of the concrete cracking. So that's mainly when the model and the casted concrete go through the process of hydration. For any types of concrete box girders or composite structure, uh, so it could be interaction of concrete with metal or combination of concrete with fibers. For dam structures, uh, it's also very important because of the process of casting, curing, hydration, and impounding. We have also a good coverage for design check, including the reinforcement based on the uh, Euro code, uh, mobile load and design load generator, and indeed the cross-section design check. You can use it in conjunction with your uh, bridge application or your general structural analysis application. We have different solutions in order to give you a good estimation about nonlinear response of the model without entering into the, let's say, nonlinear detail parameter input and setup iteration, like sequential analysis. Temperature and stress coupling uh, let you analyze uh, how the concrete goes through aging. Uh, cooling pipes is also another powerful feature that we offer in both 2D and 3D in order to control the hydration process. Crack initiation and procure variation in concrete is one of the four powerful features in, uh, in Diana, I must say. And also fire effect, uh, how the, the fire could affect the durability of, uh, of the structure. Among other uh, applications, uh, we can refer to uh, masonry and historical construction. In Diana, we offer different uh, solutions at meso or macro levels. So you can use Diana to model the uh, interaction between the individual bricks and the mortar joints. For dams and the dikes, Diana offers the solution. It covers all the aspects of uh, construction for all types of dam structures. So you can consider the fluid structure interaction, the dynamic effect, and also include uh, also induce uh, damage to the to the structure. So it's really a, a complete uh, a complete solution. Uh, fire analysis is another area that, uh, based on its uh, importance uh, these days, has become one of the main topics for structural check. So Diana can be considered again as one of the most reliable solutions for that. For earthquake uh, analysis, you can use Diana for general dynamic uh, or seismic. We have different type of uh, approach. Among the advanced type of applications, Diana is also very well known in the field of oil and gas and nuclear structures. Uh, based on the type of complexity, you can simulate uh, a 3D uh, geometric, geomechanic, geomechanical depletion, uh, borehole stability. Uh, for nuclear structure, you can uh, analyze concrete containers or uh, underground rate storage, uh, for, for instance. Let me now say a few words about uh, the Diana interactive uh, environment. So, yeah, uh, I would say the look and feel is very uh, natural. It looks pretty much like a, a standard Windows program with a, a toolbar at the top uh, with the main uh, shortcut to the main functionality. And uh, you see multiple windows. Uh, I would say the main one is a, is a central one, uh, the working window. That's basically where the magic happens, as I used to say. So that's where you can show the, your model, uh, display your mesh and your results. So everything happens in one, uh, one window. And around that, you have a different uh, window for which, which carry different functionalities. So for instance, on the left, uh, you have the model tree uh, for the geometry and the mesh. On the right, you have the analysis window and the output window. And again, the position of this window, it's, I mean, uh, up to you. You can move it to the right, to the left. I mean, uh, nothing is uh, is fixed. You can really tune the look and feel to your need. You have also a common box for warning message and error. And uh, next to that, we have also a common console because the whole uh, user interface is uh, Python scripted. So anything that you uh, do in the, in the GUI re results in a Python command that can be displayed in the Python uh, Python command. So the, the look and feel is, is very, uh, very natural. And uh, as I mentioned, you can really tune uh, the different windows and the, their position to your, uh, to your need and the, the way you want to, to, to work. So with respect to the environment, we deliver the state-of-the-art solution. Uh, we have a 
an intuitive uh, graphical user interface with various display options. Uh, it's based on uh, parasolid uh, modeling function. In terms of meshing, uh, we have a powerful and automated use the mesh engine, 2D and 3D, including a uh, hybrid mesher. It includes embedded reinforcement generation uh, for load and boundary condition. I mean, uh, we offer full support of load and boundary condition. So uh, you can even define a function uh, associated to that. And it's offering uh, a compatibility with uh, M uh, MS Excel. And for post processing, we try to offer a complete solution to result interpretation with multiple functions. Uh, for material model classification, we have uh, separate dialog boxes with various uh, input fields, which basically try to guide you through the, the parameter input. You can uh, include unique aspects uh, in this uh, material model. Uh, and we have also interactive table for function and variable uh, dependency. You can generate load combination, of course. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, you can generate function, whether it's a special or non-special function or a space function. Uh, and you have uh, what we call the property window, uh, which was appearing over there, where you can uh, basically uh, parameterize uh, some of the selected operations. So you, you really have full control on the, on the, on the settings of, uh, of uh, DNI. And we have the analysis window, uh, which is an intuitive environment to set up any type of uh, analysis, including uh, phased or stage construction analysis. And of course, we have uh, many more to, uh, to offer. In terms of workflow, uh, we always start with the geometry definition. So basically what this, this, this uh, slide basically is telling you the story for any model. I mean, uh, of course, model may vary in terms of complexity, but the story will be always the same. You start with defining your geometry. Then on this geometry, you assign your properties, such as material property, physical properties, loads, boundary condition. When everything is assigned to the geometry, you tell Diana, yeah, please uh, generate the mesh. Then the mesh is generated. So all the properties that you have assigned to your model are transferred to your finite element model. Then you can set up your analysis. So you tell Diana what to do with this model, what kind of analysis you want to perform. You run the analysis. And automatically, the results of the analysis are loaded into Diana E. So you can check your, uh, your results. If you want to change something, I don't know, you want to change a, a material property or a, a boundary constraint, you do that at the geometry level. So it means that you modify your geometry. So it means that before this change is transferred to your finite element model, you have to uh, regenerate the mesh. So don't, don't worry about that. You will get a warning that uh, your mesh is outdated, but just be aware that everything is defined at the geometry model. And to transfer that to your uh, finite element model, you have to generate the mesh. In terms of uh, geometry modeling, we have many options huh, to create geometry of your model. Uh, they are, most of them are listed on this slide from import cat uh, possibilities to uh, primitive functions and uh, yeah, different uh, geometric operation. Let's uh, go through. So you can uh, either import your geometry from third party CAD programs uh, or uh, generate your model from our integrated environment. Uh, depending on your needs. Uh, among the format files that Diana e can uh, handle, we have the WD, the DXF, the STEP, and the uh, IGS. You can also import uh, IFC file format if you are using Revit. Furthermore, if you are dealing with terrain uh, geometry, for instance, you can import cloud of nodes and uh, generate Bezier surface from them. That's also a very nice, uh, nice feature uh, that we have. After importing the geometry, there is a, a geometry check. You can always check the tolerance and the quality of the imported shapes, uh, and you can fix it, uh, which is very important. Uh, so you can basically uh, improve your, uh, uh, sorry, import your geometry and improve it uh, later in, in Diana, thanks to all the, the operation we, we offer. Otherwise, if you want, you can, of course, use the basic tool we offer in terms of modeling primitive and start your model from scratch. Diana is fully designed for that. 
So uh, we offer different uh, molding primitive uh, in 3D, such as the block, cylinder, cone, uh, torus, or sphere, but also in uh, 2D and uh, 1D, going from the polygonal chill to the point, and basically, which are the different uh, geometrical entity that you can create in Diana IE. You can uh, perform different uh, molding operation, uh, such as unite, subtract, or intersect, or some transformation move, scale, or rotate. These uh, are quite a natural function. You can sweep your geometry. Uh, and in Diana, I mean, uh, this uh, sweep functionality has been uh, enhanced uh, since uh, Diana 10.6. And you can uh, actually now sweep along a, 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 a geometry, which is a, a curved wire. Here we have an example. Huh? For instance, where I have a reference shape in 2D. And my uh, guide wire is a curved. So I can basically sweep my geometry and I end up with this nice uh, 3D uh, body. You can generate complex uh, geometry with minimum information using some smart function like uh, the lofting uh, operation. Here we have some uh, example on this slide. So from this uh, two shape, uh, you can uh, build uh, such a complex uh, lofted uh, model. Our selection window is uh, interactive and uh, object oriented, so you can directly select them based on the selection filter. As you can see, the selection filter offers a lot of choices, and based on this choice, you are able to select the right entity, which can be very convenient, especially if you are dealing with complex models. Sometimes the selection can be a little bit uh, difficult. So thanks to this selection filter, you really select the type of uh, entity that you, that you want. We are using uh, auto clash detection. Uh, you don't have to worry about the nodal connectivity of the different components of your geometry interacting with each other. Diana automatically takes care of that for you, ensuring perfect uh, continuity and, uh, and connectivity. So this is really uh, on the Diana side, so you don't have to, 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 to worry uh, with that. There are other options in order to improve your uh, geometry. Uh, I mean, you can you can sew uh, multiple sheets, uh, but you can also convert body and sheet and vice versa. For any operation in the in the model with respect to the load and boundary condition, you can use uh, the imprint uh, option to have the trace and track of the impose load uh, or a boundary condition acting on your reference uh, geometry. So by, by, by this uh, imprint function basically allows you to, uh, for instance, uh, define, for instance, a curve line or uh, two points as part of an existing shape. So you see that, for instance, if we start, we have four shapes. We have the sheet, we have the curve line, and two points, which are four different entities. After imprinting these two points and this curve into the, the sheet, it's only one entity, but still you are able to select these two point and their curve. So it allows you to define boundary condition or load on this uh, specific uh, area. Other modeling operation enable you to uh, rotate or uh, move or adjust your shape. Huh? Uh, and this can be done via action box or also interactively uh, in the working environment by dragging the mouse uh, around some, uh, uh, some circle representing the rotation or some arrows representing the translation. You can select and extract uh, faces and then uh, extrude the selected faces or edges. So for instance, here we uh, extract a, a face of this uh, polygon shape and we uh, basically extrude it and automatically uh, the, the solid is uh, adapted. You can match uh, different parts of your model with respect to each other uh, using the aligned face function when you have different projects in your working environment. And this uh, align phase come with different uh, alignment uh, options. So uh, this is also a, a nice feature. With respect to the functions, uh, it can be assigned to the geometry, to simulate the geometry thickness, for instance. So here we have a, 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 a quite elegant example of a, of a bridge, which is modeled uh, with a shell element. And basically, uh, using a spatial, a spatial, a spa, spatial function, sorry, uh, we represent the thickness and the eccentricity of the elements. So it can be also a nice way of, uh, of modeling. Of course, you can use uh, this uh, function in different contexts. Uh, you can define a free equator level in both 2D and 3D. Uh, so this is also a powerful feature in the context of uh, geotechnical application. 
Another strong feature in Diana is the Python scripting uh, and the geometry optimization with respect to the effectiveness, effectiveness of the model when it's subjected to such a load and how you can reinforce and retrofit the model because of the load distribution pattern in the model. There are many powerful features that you can use and uh, use in conjunction with other tools that we have in Diana based on the Python scripting. So Python scripting is really a, a, a plus uh, uh, if you want to uh, take advantage of it in your daily uh, journey. For meshing, uh, we have uh, different types of mesher. These uh, are smart process. Uh, they recognize the generation of your geometry. So if your geometry is based on the uh, extrusion, like on this example, uh, basically the extrusion mesh come into the picture and generate a nicely uh, pattern structured mesh. So you see uh, here we start from a 2D section that we extrude and um, yeah, we end up with this uh, extruded mesh, which, is, uh, which has a nice pattern. We have uh, adaptive element uh, size that enable you to increase uh, the density uh, of nodes and elements at certain corner and edge in order to have a smooth uh, transition mesh. So you need to activate this option in your set mesh properties. And basically you see that here uh, on these two examples, using the same uh, seeding method and the same uh, uh, number of division, but just by activating this option, you get a, a very uh, finer mesh on the curve edge compared to the, the one without this option on. So this, this really helps you to have a smooth transition in your, in your mesh. Here we have another uh, example of this uh, effect. If you have a terrain uh, geometry, for instance, you can see the difference with or without the adaptive element size option. You can observe that this uh, option, uh, with this option, you have a smooth mesh transition <coughs> compared to this uh, same mesh without the uh, option uh, on. You can uh, also use uh, grading to optimize your mesh. You have full control on the distribution of the nodes and uh, elements. After meshing, you can visualize uh, the type of section that you have assigned to the model based on the different profiles that we have in our library. This is done using the real dimensions and uh, it enables you to check the orientation and eccentricity. Uh, it's, it's very good because um, most of the time when you deal with, for instance, beam or shell model, you end up with a model consisting of line and plane. Uh, but with this visualization, you can really see the, the th really look and feel in, in 3D with the realistic uh, 3D uh, representation of the cross-section. At the mesh level, you have a different way of uh, presenting that enables you to inspect or present your model in the most uh, suitable way going from wireframe to free face edge or uh, some solid shading uh, view or shrunken shading. So there are multiple uh, possibilities. Also, there are different mesh engines which enables to generate a structured or unstructured type of mesh sets. Here are some uh, examples based on auto mesh or map mesh. Another powerful feature is uh, incremental meshing. This is very interesting when you are dealing with complex models and you need to do some modification at the geometry level for any reason. Uh, thanks to this incremental meshing, you don't need to remesh the whole model. Diana automatically goes for the meshing of the geometry part of your model that have been subjected to modification. This way you can save a lot of time in terms of meshing or remeshing of your model when subjected to the change. So this is also a nice, uh, nice feature. And uh, at the end, we have a series of uh, documentation, uh, including verification as well as our background theory. Uh, since Diana 7 that we released uh, before summer, we have uh, a new uh, um, uh, um, online help, which is more structured, uh, where you can easily find your way. Uh, so I encourage you to, 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 to use that. It's uh, it's definitely more, more user-friendly. And we have also on our website uh, a series of uh, tutorials that you can use to get acquainted with the different uh, analysis capabilities or an analysis uh, or modeling capabilities of, uh, of Diane. So this is it for the general presentation. Before I jump to Diana and I give you a, a short demo, I'd like to bring to your attention that uh, we will have a couple of uh, events coming uh, in September. Uh, the first one is uh, a technical webinar. It's a free webinar. You can register for free. It's on September 6th 
It's about the structural assessment of the Gary Senda Tower, and very, we are very proud to have as a guest lecturer for this uh, presentation, uh, Professor Inverzini from the Politecnico de, de Torino. So uh, he will be presenting this, uh, the result of this assessment uh, together with one of his uh, students. So uh, feel free to register for this uh, very uh, interesting technical webinar. And you will see, uh, yeah, uh, how Diana was used in this uh, in this project. Next to that, uh, we will have our regular online uh, course, the Nonina Behavior of Reinforced Concrete Structure. This is the third edition this year. So this course will be in September from 11 to 22. It's a paid course. You can register. Uh, it consists of six different modules. So you can register per module or for the whole course. And it's all online, and it consists of uh, six uh, course sessions of two and a half hours plus a Q&A session. So uh, no need to travel. You can just attend it behind your computer. So it's uh, easy access. Let me see if there are any questions at the moment. Uh, so I see that there is a question. Are embedded pipes implemented in Diana? Yes, they are. Uh, and we have even a wizard for that. So you can uh, basically uh, use this wizard to generate uh, your embedded pile or uh, sheet pile wall. You can also uh, include anchors. So everything is, uh, is available and uh, can be easily generated in, uh, in Diana. So uh, having said that, let's now move to, uh, to Diana. And uh, during this uh, short demo, I'm going to show you how to uh, define hydrostatic uh, pressure load. And to do that, I'm going to use a, a, a model that I, that I have, something relatively uh, simple, which consists of uh, two shapes. Huh? Uh, I have a foundation that I can change color. And I have a dam, which I'm going to put in gray, for instance, so that we have something better. So you can see that it's very straight. I mean, uh, it's a very simplified uh, model, but which is good enough for today to show you the, the different, uh, well, the, the how to apply sorry, the, the hydrostatic uh, pressure. So the model is very simple. Uh, if you want to have, uh, to, to basically build this model from scratch, you can uh, use one of our tutorial. Uh, I'm using basically the geometry of one of our tutorial, which is a dam uh, spectrum analysis. So if you want to rebuild this model, you can find all the information uh, over there. So as you can see, it consists in uh, two shapes, uh, foundation that we will assume uh, to be a kind of rock foundation and uh, a dam that we will assume to be a, a kind of concrete dam. So I will assign some uh, a linear material property to this uh, uh, dam and foundation. And uh, eventually we can uh, define some interface uh, at the interface between the dam and the foundation. I will show you how to do that. But mainly the point of interest is how to uh, define an hydrostatic pressure based on a certain height of, uh, of water. So if I add uh, my dam, you can see that the foundation is, 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 is there. So I'm going to bring it back. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, imprint the base of my dam into my foundation. Why I'm going to do that? Because uh, I, I will need uh, to split the surface. And this imprint is basically going to split the, fond the top foundation surface based on the imprint of this dam, which makes it much easier later on if I want to make some uh, selection of surfaces and also if I want to define some interface between the dam and the, and the foundation. So to do that, I go to geometry, modify, imprint. And here I have to select a target, which will be my foundation, and a tool, which will be my dam. And then I just click apply. and. So far, not much happened, you would say. Actually, it's uh, a lot happened already because if I hide my dam, now you see that I have the footprint of my dam at the base uh, on, the, um, on the foundation. And what's interesting now is that if I go and put the selection filter to face, I'm basically able to select the faces. So it's not one uh, big faces, it's now uh, splitted. I can also select this part, you see. So it's quite uh, it's quite handy now uh, for 
defining uh, extra property to my uh, to my model. So uh, let's now move on, and uh, the first thing to do would be uh, to assign some uh, property to the model. So I'm going to start with the foundation. I'm going to define it as a structural solid, and I'm going to give it some uh, some property. But I call it rock, for instance. So don't pay too much attention to the parameter. I mean, it's uh, not sure they are that illustrative. So I'm going to put a Young's modulus, a Poisson ratio, and uh, I can put a saturated density, for instance, of uh, 2,000. I don't need to include any aspect. And I click Apply. And I'm going to do the same for the dam. I'm going to uh, use structural solid element. And for that, I'm going to define some concrete property or kind of. So I choose a concrete and masonry class and I go for linear static. And over there, I specified the Young's modulus. And the density, and I click apply. So I can see on the on the left on the geometry tree that I have two material, the rock and the concrete. Uh, so for instance, if you want to make sure that uh, the assignment of your material has been done properly to your geometry, one of the nice things to do is to color the shape by material. And then you see that uh, the rock material color is assigned to the foundation and the concrete to the to the dam. So I would say for a model consisting of two shapes, it's maybe not that relevant. But when you have a very complex model with many material uh, assigned to that, using this uh, color label can be very useful to see if the assignment has been done uh, properly. So let's continue and. Uh, I'm going to define some uh, interface between my dam and my uh, foundation, for instance. How to do that? Uh, I'm going to open the connection, which is there, and I'm going to define a set, which is interface. The connection type is interface, mode is closed, and uh, I'm going to select a face. So I'm going first to select the bottom of the dam. So I need to select these different faces. And then I'm going to select not this one, going too fast, but this, this part. So the imprint on the foundation. So that's why it was important to perform this uh, imprint uh, operation so that I can select the surface where I want to uh, assign uh, interface, basically. I can define some material property. So again, something simple. I'm going to put that something relatively stiff, stiff so that we don't have any problem with the interface. Again, the, the idea today is just to show you some, uh, some workflow. So I'm going to put something stiff. And some geometry, okay, yes. And then I create, and you see that the interface are created. If I show the dam, you see the other side of the interface. And basically this uh, symbol red and blue are defining the direction to the normal of the interface. So uh, this is uh, important to know, but uh, this drives the, the normal to your of, of your interface. So I have assigned a uh, material and uh, defined some interface. Now I'm going to define some boundary condition so that my model is not flying away. So I will start with a constraint that I call BCX, for instance, which will be part of the, of the support set, which I'll call BC. And I'm going to select this face and this face. And for this face, I say that the X translation is constrained. And I'm going to do the same in Y. But for this face, I select the Y translation. 
And I'm going to uh, constrain the bottom of my model in Z. So it's all good. So it's created, yes. So if I go to the left on the geometry tree, you see that under connection interface, I have my set of interface. And if I go to uh, the support, I have my boundary constraint that I can hide or show uh, whenever I want. So this is uh, this is it for the model. And now, uh, actually, the, the, the interesting part of today, uh, I'm going to define uh, an hydrostatic pressure. So uh, the height of, of the top of the surface is uh, something like 100 meter. But something you can easily check if you put the selection filter to uh, vertices and you select this this point, you see at the bottom right corner uh, the coordinate of the of the point, and you see that the z uh, value is around 95 uh, something uh, meter. So I can I can, for instance, uh, put an hydrostatic uh, pressure base. Uh, imagine that we have a reservoir on that side with 80 meter water. So let's do that. So I go to my load. And here I define a case, hydro static load. I define the load case, eventually with the same name. I choose for a face uh, selection. And here under the load type, if I scroll down, you find the hydrostatic pressure over there. And I'm going to define uh, basically the area where I want to apply this hydrostatic pressure. So if I assume that my reservoir is on that side, for instance, I need to select this dam face and also this foundation part. So this is basically the area where uh, this hydrostatic pressure should act. And for the hydraulic head, um, yeah, let's assume something like 80 meter, for instance, and I click create. And let me switch off some of the representation, you see that we have arrows which automatically display this hydrostatic pressure based on the height of, uh, of their position. So you see that uh, it's uh, basically uh, increasing or decreasing based on the slope and the height. So uh, this is one of the nice uh, thing of Diana. You just select the face where you want to apply this uh, hydrostatic load you give uh, an hydraulic head, and automatically uh, the, uh, the function is applied to the surface with the correct uh, with the correct value. Internally, Diana uh, computes the, the function, so it's 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 relatively straightforward. I mean, it uh, it has no no complication. What's important is to have uh, the possibility to select the faces where uh, the hydrostatic should uh, act. So that's why it was also important to have this imprint of the dam into the foundation so that I can select easily these faces here. Because without the, the imprint, I would have selected also the other side. So uh, thanks to the imprint, which has divided the, the top of the foundation, I can easily make this selection and easily apply my hydrostatic pressure. So my hydrostatic pressure is defined. It appears also under my loads here. So I can hide it. I'll show it. So just for the fun, we are going to uh, run a, a linear analysis machine and just uh, look at the result. Uh, but the main idea is that uh, with this hydrostatic pressure, you can also consider uh, modeling the different phase of impounding of your dam. So uh, in that case, you, you just need to define different hydrostatic load with for different height, which represents the different uh, impounding phase of your model. And then in a nonlinear analysis, you apply this uh, different load case, and then you can see uh, in the different phase uh, the effect of uh, uh, the impounding onto your dam structure and your foundation. So uh, having this uh, hydrostatic pressure load is, 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 is really a must when you, when you are dealing with, uh, with dam. So uh, I have set up my model. Uh, everything has been applied to the geometry, as you could see, the, the properties, the loads, the boundary condition, and etc. 
So now I have to tell Diana how to discretize this model. So I go to the mesh property. I select the shape uh, target and I go for uh, element size and I'm going to apply an element size, I don't know, for instance, of 25 meter. I make something relatively coarse because I don't want to have a, a, a too fine model which uh, takes too much time. I click apply and then I mesh. And here is my model. So you see my model is uh, relatively coarse. I have big elements, but uh, for today is not a big deal. If I move to the uh, model tree under mesh, I can see some information about uh, my dam and my foundation. So I see that in total, my uh, model consists of more than 5,000 elements. You see that the material have been transferred as well. You can see that all the properties, the different elements that are used, and I can also show my load. So you can also see on, under your mesh, your hydrostatic load, which is applied to your dam and your foundation. And there you see that uh, the function nicely represent your hydrostatic pressure. So the model is basically ready. We can uh, eventually perform a, a very simple linear static analysis. So you go to analysis window, you add a new analysis, add command, and you go for structural linear static. I don't have any specific for choice. So I mean, having the the default output uh, such as uh, displacement, stress, strain is okay for me. So I have nothing else to add and I can perform the analysis by clicking this icon. And analysis is finished. If I go to the message box, I see that my job is completed. No problem. So analysis is done. Automatically, if I go to the result environment, I see that my uh, results output are uh, loaded. And if I expand this menu, I can find the different result components that are available for my model. So for instance, if I look at the displacement, I can see the impact of the, of the, so I can see the displacement of my model uh, resulting from this uh, hydrostatic pressure that I have defined. You can also look at the stresses, for instance, you have the different component. So what's important to, to see is how easy uh, you can uh, define uh, an hydrostatic pressure, which is not such a simple uh, load uh, by uh, just uh, defining the, 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 the hydraulic head and automatically Diana apply uh, the hydrostatic pressure uh, corresponding to this uh, hydraulic head. So uh, if you are dealing, as I said, with uh, impounding of, uh, of your dam, I mean, you can different load, different load cases and phase uh, mimic the different phase of uh, of impounding and see the and see the outcome. So that's that's basically what I wanted to uh, highlight uh, today in this uh, in this presentation. So let me quickly see if there are uh, any questions. I see that there is a question regarding complex model, and if there is, uh, if you have difficulties uh, with complex model, is there an option to send the model to the support team and ask for their help in solving the model error? If you are uh, you have a valid client with a valid uh, license, you are entitled to technical support, so you can always contact your support during your, the period of your uh, of your license, of course. So there is a, a two questions which are related to the hydrostatic load. Uh, if there is anything else to consider uh, when defining the hydrostatic load, no. You just have to make sure that you can uh, select the part of your geometry uh, where you want to apply this uh, this load, and uh, you specify the, the hydraulic head, and uh, basically uh, that's it. So uh, you have to think the head of the different uh, geometry op geometrical operation to make sure that you can select the, 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 the different phase. Because if I get back to the geometry here, I'm going to switch off the load. And if I hide my dam, before I do the imprint operation, basically I would have been able only to select the, the complete uh, top phase. So the whole length on both sides of the dam, which I don't want. I only want to select one side of the dam. So thanks to the imprint, which helped me to select the bottom face 
of the dam and the foundation for my interface, it also helped me to select the right side uh, of the face of the foundation to uh, impose my hydrostatic pressure. So you have to find um, uh, or think about the, 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 the type of load you want to define and where you want to, do, to uh, apply it. And based on that, uh, try to manipulate your geometry to uh, be easily able to select this, uh, this part of your, uh, of your geometry. I think I have answered the question, so uh, it's all good. So one more time, I would like to thank you for attending this uh, this webinar. Uh, within a couple of days, uh, this uh, session will be available on our YouTube channel, so keep an eye on that. Keep also an eye on our website, there are more events coming. And uh, as I mentioned, in two weeks time, we have a technical webinar, it's free of charge. Don't hesitate to, uh, to register. And for the one who want to dive more into Diana and learn more, we have our regular courses, so uh, this will be in uh, three weeks' time. So uh, there are still some seats available, but uh, don't wait too long because uh, it uh, it will be uh, fully booked very very soon. So uh, I encourage you to register as soon as possible. Thank you for your time. Wish you to have a pleasant day or pleasant morning, depending where you are uh, in the world. And uh, we will uh, be in touch uh, very soon in the next uh, webinar. Thank you all. Bye.